Welcome to the Floor Academy Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in Mesa, Arizona. With me this week is Brant Garrison, and we are going to be talking about FASI, the hybrid and advanced, I see, I can't even get it right, the hybrid and advanced systems installation event. I, I got this. I promise. I know what I'm talking about. I, I, I'm i a professional over here. I did research and stuff. I promise. Uh, <laughs> it, it's going to be taking place in Fresno, California in March of 2024. We're building up hype. We're talking about what's happening. We're talking about why it exists, all this fun stuff. But essentially, what uh, Chris Blanchard, Brandt, and Mike Jarchow noticed was that uh, the industry is lacking in a couple of areas. Well, there's a lot of really good hand skill training in the industry and you can call up just about any manufacturer talk to your rep get them out to do a job start or you can show up to a distributor just about any month and take some kind of a product training class for a couple of hours and and get some free meals and whatnot out of it there's a there's a lack in higher level installation techniques as well as the ability to be able to sell them. And personally, where, where I like what's going on is that all the hand skills in the world, you can know how to do it, but if you don't know how to sell it, what's the point? If you can't make money out of it, at it, who cares? And so I like that they're combining the business side with the technical side, and they're allowing both things to exist at an event, and we're they're going to work on not only showing you the technical side so that you can find ways to upsell clients on really awesome installation methods, but you're also going to find ways to combine materials that maybe you wouldn't usually put together. And then you're going to learn how, how do I manage all of this and make it work for my business? So Brant is the owner of Garrison Tile and Renovation and is CTI 1642 with years of installation experience uh you know they just they got together and and they started brainstorming this and and realized what was lacking and they said hey we're gonna do something about this and honestly this is what the industry needs it needs these small grassroots efforts to have installers come together and say i care about my trade i care about my industry and i want to raise the bar in it and i'm going to take this to other people and i'm not afraid of competition there's there's only us making this better for everyone it's not a look there's plenty of work for everybody you don't have to be afraid so that all being said Floor Academy podcast is here every week talking the business side of contracting, and I want you to be able to learn how to run a business, be more profitable, make more money, gain back free time, because everyone goes into business like, I'm going to have more time with my family. And then you work 90-hour weeks, and you're happy to do so. But look, that's not why we started. We wanted to do it so that we could work 20-hour weeks or 10-hour weeks. And so... You have to fishing whatever you want. Exactly. I don't care what you do with the time, right? But I just you need the free time back. That's the whole point of it. And so I, every week we have different guests, different topics, and you start taking the little nuggets and you pull them out. You start implementing them, and you will not only make a little bit more money, but you will have probably a better clientele than you used to, and you should gain free time as you start going through the episodes and putting it all together. Uh, Thank you to uh, all of our sponsors. Make sure you go to Floor Academy Pod and check out some of the other stuff we have going on over there. There's our Masterclass Masterminds that are starting in October and will be once a month moving forward where the members from our business therapy mastermind groups will be teaching different topics once a month to the people that join the masterclass. And then you will get time to have like a mastermind set up and just chit chat and go over whatever it is that you're struggling with in your business and get feedback from other people. If you want something a little more high level and dedicated, then you can check out the mastermind groups, which I put five business owners in. We meet every other week and you you have to set goals you get held accountable by the other people you're getting feedback from other business owners that actually want to advance their business and it forces you to work on your business instead of only in it and say that you're going to work on it 
and then you get home and you pop on the TV and nothing's happening. And then you feel really silly when you told a group of five people that you were going to work on this goal and you didn't do it and you got to show up again in two weeks. Man, I can't tell you how many times they're just like, I, I, I don't have an excuse. I got busy and I, and I forgot about it or the business took over. Right. And it just, the amount of humility it makes you have, it has been, it's been a blessing for all of them. Um, if you're interested, let me know, reach out floor Academy podcast at gmail.com. That is enough out of me for now. Brent, who are you? What do you do? Why do you do it? I'm Brent Garrison. I'm the owner of Garrison Tile and Renovation in Burley, Idaho. <clears throat> I'm a tile contractor. <clears throat> Excuse me. I haven't been on camera for a while. <clears throat> I'm a okay. tile contractor. I specialize in uh, custom tile installations, mainly tile showers. Nowadays, tile floors aren't uh, a huge thing anymore, but mainly bathrooms. Seems like I just go from shower to shower to shower. Well, at least you're <laughs> staying clean. Yep. <laughs> I get uh, hang out the shower all day long. How, how long have you been doing it? Uh, I started fresh out of high school when I graduated in 20, or 2002. <laughs> that tells you how old I am. Okay. I started, the first time I picked up a grout float was 1998 as a 14-year-old kid. And then I got to chop mud and be the helper and the grunt mm -hmm. and do all the hard stuff that my 15 year old now looks at me and goes, well, this, I can't do this. Like I was doing this when I was younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we've got, you know, we got, uh, wait, you're the guy that gets to say, I've been doing, I got 20 years experience. I've been doing this for 20 years, but hopefully you've been doing it the right way for 20 years and learning instead of repeating one year of experience for, for 20 years. You know, I, uh, the guy that I worked for, there were a lot of older guys that he had me working with, and I learned a lot of right stuff. And there was some wrong pepper I've I've learned over the years, and as I've obviously I know how to figure stuff out, I've learned what was wrong and what we were doing, and fixed it and gone from there. Okay, so tell me about Thassi, the 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 hybrid and advanced systems installation event you you the three of you have have created this and uh it seems like it's gonna it's gonna be a really fun event in march so the <clears throat> the idea behind the thassi event is chris blanchard and i have talked for years about training events and what could be better what we think we could do better what what people could benefit from um and on top of that our mutual friend josh levitt is somebody that like, i benefited from the experience of being an apprentice a helper for years i had people sh showing me how to do it there's a lot of people who don't have someone to show them how to do it <clears throat> and so the idea behind the thassi event is to get the manufacturers together and partner up with an installer and demonstrate how to properly install their shower systems mm -hmm. from start to finish. And this is on the prep end from bare studs to ready to set tile. And, okay. uh, that's the, that's the goal and, to and show people how to properly do it from start to ready okay. to set tile. And are, are we dealing with, we're dealing with everything, right? It doesn't matter if it's going to be mud, foam, a combination. It's, we're going to have we multiple really want, different ways to do things. We correct? really want to focus on a combination of foam walls and mud packed pans, because that's, that is what is most cost and time efficient. Obviously foam pans, those, and that's what a lot of people do, but there's a lot of situations where a foam pan doesn't work. And that's really, we want to be able to kind of focus on dry pack shower pans with topical sheet member. Excuse me. We are going to try to demonstrate, you know, a proper foam pan installation, but we don't want that to be the focus. And we also mm -hmm. want to demonstrate mud walls in a dry pack pan um, and how to do topical waterproofing on that and have it be an actual system. Okay. And then we, we're working in the, the business side of things a little bit, too. So we're getting the manufacturers there. They're going to be showing off their, their wares and, and how to do it. They'll have their people presenting. I'm sure there's a, what we got a, a curbless uh, installation going on. I know that we're going to we're going to focus on. And then there's some business talks happening. And so, like, why 
combine all of it? Like, what did you see with the industry that you said, this is something that needs to exist and you wanted to put it all in a single package and bring it to market? Because the trainings that are out there are just kind of one piece of the puzzle. And we thought, why not bring all the pieces to the puzzle together? Mm -hmm. You know, learn how to learn how all these things go together, but also learn how to sell it. Learn how how to sell this to your customers because you know curbless showers they're a hard sell and there there's specifics to it that a lot of people don't understand and so <clears throat> combining how to sell like for example a curbless shower with how to do a curbless shower at the same time you know i think that's kind of a no-brainer mm -hmm. i mean i think a lot of stuff you just <sighs> You just have to get ballsy and ask to sell it. To, to, to be honest, like I, there was, uh, what did but I you do? Have to be able, but it has to be the right. You have to understand what the right place is. You can't. Yes. You can't walk into a you know a seven shower and hey, I'm gonna this curbless. No big deal. You're gonna shoot yourself in the foot. You you broke you up at, at, you broke up with whatever you said right before the seven foot shower. If you're trying to sell somebody, can you hear me now? Yeah. If you're trying to sell someone a big monster curbless shower, I mean, you got to know how to be able to sell it and also how mm -hmm. to execute. Yeah. No, I agree. It, it's it was one of those things like I you know every look I'm the plastic plank guy okay everybody knows it I, I'm not the tile guy but if there was. I was getting creative one day and I, you know, I started installing landings on stairs at like a 45, just so it would go with the flow of traffic as you made that turn on like the little four by four landings. And I was like, man, I wonder if I could make a border and then install the inside of the border at a 45. I was like, I know it's click stuff, but theoretically, like if I chop off all the locks and I make my cuts clean, the whole landing gets glued down anyways, like this should work. And I just went to the client and I asked and I was like, hey, do you mind if I try this? And they were like, no. And nailed it, took a picture, started selling them after that. Like, sometimes you just have to like get crazy and, and be like, OK, look, theoretically, this should all work. Like, let's put this together. You make a couple of phone calls, check some stuff out with some tech people and you go and you go and do it. Right. But that's the advantage of coming to an event like this is. You don't necessarily have to go way, way out on the line here and, and make a crazy decision and maybe it's a big mistake. You can go to people that are doing things in that arena and start asking the questions and get firsthand feedback and the technical reps should be there to answer the questions too. And you're really going to be able to start putting that information together and get a solid base so that you feel very comfortable when you go back and you are in front of a client that no confidence. questions. Yes. Yeah. Building confidence of I'm confident going to the customer to try to sell us because I'm confident that I know how to make it work. Well, how many times have you gone out and you were just like winging it by the seat of your pants because you were like, <laughs> uh, well, you know, like, I think I can do it. Like, yeah. I'll, okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. You know, let me put funny, this number on it. It's funny you say that because I was having a conversation, a text message conversation with a good friend uh, a little while ago. You know, he feels like he's, he doesn't, he's in a funk and he doesn't kind of, he doesn't know what's going on. He feels like he's wandering around. It's like, you just got to, you just got to, you know, you know how to do it. You just got to let go and go out there and do it. Mm -hmm. And, Three months from now, you're gonna be like, "Shit, did I do that right?" But you know, you did because you know what you're doing. Yes, I, I th <laughs> it's you got to step out on that ledge every once in a while. And it, it look if you want to take like the little baby step out, and you want to dangle your toes over, like this event is the place to be. Like it's gonna give you a lot more confidence to go back and knock something out of the park. And it's it's not often that you get a chance to go and learn things and ask questions and and. You know, look, go volunteer, get involved in the demo and go screw something up so that yeah. you can screw up it, a, a it, module. Ideally, we want to have a technical rep there um, speaking to the crowd, to the attendees as an installer is installing it. And so you can kind of see and 
it would be awesome if multiple different people hopped in and did the hands-on part mm -hmm. so that people could get some experience and be coached kind of, I mean, coached by the technical reps and be able to ask questions. That's the whole idea here is to be able to see how it all goes together from start to finish. And ideally what we would like to see is these modules be geared towards time efficiency and cost efficiency so that people are able to prep their showers better and faster to save themselves time, which time is money. I agree. I, I think that's one of the biggest things that people will argue when when you get into this mud versus foam debate or, you know, I want to hang my uh, cement board, whatever, however you do it. What yeah. I don't, a, a lot of people will start arguing, well, the, the supplies are so much more. The supplies are so much more. The supplies may be more, but anything that you can that's more expensive and, and you're putting a proper margin on the more expensive it is you make more money so that's always a great thing but if it's buying you time and you're losing like if, if it buys you time and you lose money on on labor technically because you get done a day early hopefully you made some on the materials but here's the good thing right if you can gain a day well, on every good. shower you sold three or two or three showers you, more. You, correct. You've sold a couple more showers a year, which actually will net you way more, more money, money, especially if you're selling the materials because you, uh, you've just sold three extra, two, three extra showers worth of materials as well. Yep. And I, I think that's where a lot of people are going to get confused on. You know, this is where the business knowledge needs to come in and these conversations need to start happening of what does it actually look like and, and how do I combine these things and why do I need to understand it? And and you put the and technical there's also, skill. There's also a whole lot of stuff you can do on your prep work that saves you time. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of another part of it is how do I make my prep work faster, more efficient and make it so setting tile is just the fast end part of it. Okay. And I mean, it's, it's going through all of it, right? You guys are going to talk about what you're doing to be efficient on your projects. The technical reps can talk about what, how they're, what products they use to be efficient. Yeah. And, and again, I think a lot of times like people will look at an expensive product and be like, I don't want that. It's too expensive. How am I going to sell that again? If that's it's a, that's faster, what I the first time I picked up a bucket of hydroband quick here. I'm like, this shit's. 180 bucks a gallon like are you serious but the after i figured out how to integrate it into my system I was like hey that more than pays for itself because mm -hmm. yeah. you're well so that's that's a fast drying topical waterproofing but it can be wet and you can kit. waterproof yep. it, yeah so you, you can put the water in and be waterproofing by the end of the day which means you don't have to wait till yeah. the next day to come back and fill it with water and then wait yep. 24 hours like you you're yep. doing it so Again, like, okay, man, that stuff's expensive. Yes, but I just saved myself 12 to 16 day. hours of wait time doing Almost essentially hour. nothing, especially if you don't have to do the bathroom floor in that room, right? Now, the great, I'm stuck. I, yeah, you walk into a bathroom where you're just doing the shower, and you've got to be fast or else, you know, time, like I said, time is money. Correct. you got to be able to efficiently get it done. And yes. there's ways to do it. And so, yeah, and it, look, that stuff's expensive, but if it buys you a day back, like, again, you're going to be able to sell a shower, which makes up for the lost revenue of the more or the more expensive product. It's just there's tons of ways to do things, and I think that's what needs to happen is it, systems are a are big part of this industry. And I know a lot. Look, I, we've I had the debate at at coverings two years ago. Uh, who did we who did we get? We had Aaron and Trask and Ken and uh, uh, what's his name um, on the level. He, he's with Schluter now. Um, Joseph Matisse. Oh, yes. Uh, we had the four of them, and and we put two and two, and you know there was the systems people, and there was the like. Uh, Franken shower or hybrid <laughs> approach. And look, at the end of the day, any company can tell me whatever they want, but I know that it's me and ultimately I better have the bank account that backs something. And so yeah. if I if I want to hybrid something, I'll, I'll use a kind term. If I want to hybrid something, 
And I think that's the best system. If as long as I know I'm meeting standards, and again, like I, this isn't just a this isn't just a tile thing. This I can do this in the hardwood world. I can go and get somebody's vapor barrier product or moisture mitigation product and put it with somebody else's primer and 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 their leveler, and then I can use a third company's adhesive. And if those are the products I like, and I know I'm hitting the marks on all of them, I don't care. Because I know I'm doing what I need to do, and I'm going to feel confident in my installation, and I'm going to charge enough to feel good about it. And if it saves me time or it gives me the results that I like, cool. Like, I'm not going to stick with a company whose stuff I don't like. And I think that's a a big thing is that a lot of people are afraid to get out of the box. And I think I, I like that approach to this event, too, is that you're willing to show, hey, let's get creative. And what if we take a little bit of company A, company B, company C, we put them together. And now look, I gained half a day worth of, of time, but you get to see the systems too. You get both approaches, which is very nice. Yep. We want to highlight the full systems thing. And if people take away and mix and match, that's on them. Yes. At the end, it's on you anyways, though. How it is with me. I, I know exactly how to create a full, 25 year ladder creek shower system and i can do it more cost efficient with other stuff but hey when i have a customer to want set i know how to do it mm-hmm. i know how to do it the most efficient fastest way possible and they have all the products to do that well i think that's the other beautiful part of, of this right like let's go learn multiple ways because it, one size doesn't fit all i, I think anyone that's been an installer That's one thing on- I've learned being in these groups is that there's one there there's a certain way of, of prepping a shower that I, I just cannot see myself ever doing and I'm not gonna name names. I won't ever do it because I've tried it and it's like, how the hell does anyone do this and not just go commit suicide <laughs> <laughs> But for other people they love it and mm-hmm. that's what works for them, works for them. It's great. I but it's you never like one way doesn't work. And, and so to have options, right, you're going to meet a client, maybe they're, well, they're ideal, right? But let me present but for options. Different, for different, you need to know multiple different things for different apps. There's, there's different, there's different ways to skin the cat on everything. Sometimes cool. you've got to do something a certain way, but does that make sense. Yeah, no, I, but that, that and like that's what it, go again i said like you said it's not one size fits all Mm -hmm. yeah but i want to have options to present my client right i want to be able to go in and and bid this project and if they come back and they're like hey we love you you're you're three thousand dollars more well okay look i'm giving you this i can scale it back to this and and i can i can do it for this price or you know like here's Here's some other options, right? I can accomplish nearly the same thing. Maybe instead of you offering your client a a 25 year warranty through one of the manufacturer systems, you take it down to a 10, maybe you take it down to a five and and you're making some kind of a hybrid system. Um, You know, you can find a different thin set to, to use. You can take it from a, a, an epoxy grout to a, you know, a cementitious one like you you, you you got there's there's a hundred options right and, and so the more you know and the more you go get educated the better you're able to service people and i think a lot of people just get can like they're they get so addicted to one thing and they're like this is the way to do it it's like no like go learn and get as much knowledge as you can so you have as many options as possible so that when you walk into a situation you're like okay i got 20 different ways to solve this what's the best way for me to do this as efficiently as possible that's what i was just gonna say there's it's um <clears throat> knowing what the most what the best application or method is for the application as well as how do i do this the most efficiently mm-hmm. that's both are both are important well, and look, someone's going to get the call from the little old lady that needs something done, man. You're going to have to help her out. So, yeah. like, you better have options instead of just going in <laughs> and say, 
My showers start at nine thousand dollars. I'm on a fixed income, and I can't. Dude, it's don't hurt grandma, man. Go help hey, her man, out. Like I, find a way. I, I you're you're eighty five years old. You obviously don't need a lifetime warranty. I can make you the same shower. This can do the same thing. And this is I can cut the cost down here, here, and here. And this is what you're not going to get as far as a warranty goes. But it's going to serve the same purpose, do the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Gives hey. you flexibility. I love it. That's that's what it's going to be about. So I'm going to interrupt us here real quick. I'm going to read a quick little word, and uh, we will we will get back into this and hear more about what we're doing. Zero entry, curbless, ADA compliant. All these words describe a shower pan style that is both luxurious and accessible for every person. GoBoard Point Drain was designed with this in mind. The low profile features and adjustable riser perfectly enable a zero entry installation. Whether you install mud pans or use GoBoard wedges, the integrated membrane keeps water securely flowing in the right direction, down the drain and into your pocket. Right, we're gonna get that money in your pocket with this. Visit www. That, that's too many. www.jm.com forward slash go board to discover the possibilities, and go find out their alternative sealant thing. It, there's a little uh, document over there. You can use like eight thousand different sealants, and uh, you know they give you options to get it done. That's what's they're very lenient, very flexible product. And uh, if you poke around their website or YouTube or somewhere around there, you might even find a, a video of, of Brant doing doing an installation. I wasn't going to say anything, but yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll throw it in there. You're here, man. I'm going to get an extra plug out of this out of this spot this time. <laughs> yeah, you might find some videos of me in there showing off what we want to show off at the event. So, um, what is it like? we're trying to put together an event, right? So it's not going to be just the, the major manufacturers there. We're, we're trying to involve others. And so do we have a list of people that have signed up already? I, I look, I know we're still like six months out while we record this, but do we we're have any committals from like tool people or we got, do so we we've had, we've had, we don't have any, I don't know that we have any firm commitment to yep. I mean, I think there's people who have said they'll be there as it gets closer to that stuff mm -hmm. will get further. But yeah. We've had interest from, um, give me a second to think here. I've had a lot going on. Well, we're working on, look, you, you guys are working on getting other vendors there and All it's not going to just be like full foam board and, and, no. um, setting material manufacturers that you're trying to get the, the industry to show up and you help support and make things happen. Well, FX there. Personally, I'm a huge fan, <laughs> so I want Chase there. Hey, Chase, uh, Chase is a Patreon supporter. You can help support the show like Chase does over at patreon.com forward slash floor academy. Chase makes an amazing product, and every one of my customers, when I pull out of his drain and I show him, or I show the customers all the different stuff, ability to adjust it, just height, all the different grades and the colors and finishes and the designs. They're like, oh my gosh, that's that's amazing. That tile guy designed that. I said, yep, it's awesome. They just, oh, whatever you, you do, you're the professional. You do what you want to do. So mm -hmm. there, I have not had a single unhappy customer with him. Um, <clears throat> I know we've had uh, interest from Built With Foam. We've had interest from, uh, like I said, um, you're, break, you're breaking up a little now. bit. I, I, your hot spot's killing me, but I'm gonna, we're going to work through no, this. I'm, I, I, I'm not on the hot spot. I'm on the Wi-Fi here. Oh, well, you, okay. You're you're probably a little far away from it. Had <laughs> to come out here because it's quiet. <laughs> I, hey, it's all good. We're making it happen, and I, I, we're getting most of it. That that's what matters. Essentially, we're going to get the a, a standard hodgepodge of of other vendors so that you can go, and it, it's not just. There's going to be more to it, right? It's it's you're going to be able to go and and talk with a lot of different parts of the industry and start asking the crazy questions of. You should be getting inspired while you're there, and and you should start coming up with crazy ideas, and you should be able to go start going to the vendors and be like, well, what if I combine this with this, and like, how does that work? And what if I want to put this with this? Like, hey, can you come with me and let's talk to this rep over here? And like, what if I want to combine? You can start putting those ideas together and and having the conversations 
in in person, which is going to be far better than over the phone, which which should be yeah. a really great yeah. benefit. In person, um, we um, it's looking like we should have a couple of the tool vendors there. Well, have, I mean, it'll be a good mixture of everything. Mm-hmm. So not just the major manufacturers, which is always good. Uh, and then what's the like? What we are we're working on CTI testing, I believe. Yeah, we'll have CTI testing the day before the event. Okay, and there is there's sponsorships for that available. Were you yes. working on sponsorships? Yeah. Chris Blanchard has posted information about how to apply for sponsorships if someone needs help. If you're interested in taking the test, um, you can reach out to Chris Blanchard, myself. You can reach out to Mike Jarchow, Josh Levitt, uh, any of us about how to get uh, hooked up with that. Um, <clears throat> we are we're hoping to have contractors that we're, are willing to sponsor. I think some of the manufacturers might be willing to sponsor and part of the event we're going to sponsor mm-hmm. some spots as well. Okay. So get uh, back to the community. Well, and as as CTI sixteen forty two, look th- that thing gets dogged on still a lot. It does. What's what's the what has it done for your business? I can't point to. I mean, I guess I can in a in a way. No, I, I've never had a customer that has told me I hired you because of that CT item or, mm-hmm. but it's definitely changed my attitude towards my professionalism. And, and the biggest thing that had changed in my business was the snap cutter thing. I did not own a nice snap cutter before I signed up for that test. And everything I saw was you better buy a snap cutter. Or you won't be able to finish the test. So I did, I bought, I bought myself a Sigma snap cutter and that has been the biggest game changer for me. Because right now, I'm working in a master bathroom with a teeny, narrow... There's nowhere I could set up a saw other than out in the yard. And it's been raining here all day. I'd have been screwed today if I didn't have a snap mm-hmm. cutter. Well, so, I think it's an efficiency thing a lot of people lose out on because they're walking back and forth. Yeah. Like, you can do it right there in the bathroom or right outside of it. And it still looks yep. just as just as good when you know what you're doing. For my uh, business, that was the biggest thing was the efficiency of being of fo- having to force myself because I paid five hundred dollars to take this test and I don't want to fail it, so I bought the snap cutters to be able to, to pass it. So I forced myself to learn how to use it. And once I did, I'm like, "What was I doing all these years <laughs> setting up a wet saw on every job? I don't yeah. even set up a wet saw unless I absolutely have to." Well, and I think the the fact that you've never had anyone outright tell you, like, hey, I didn't hire you because you're a CTI. Like, I've only had one, maybe two clients tell me that they went with me because of my certified flooring installer certification for hardwood laminate and, and luxury vinyl plank. But I think what- that the fact that I have that on my, you know, my estimates, it's on there. It's on my emails. I mean, I have my CTI number all over the place, yeah. my business cards, all that. It makes a difference. It, it we- shows it. That yeah. When when you use it as a as a proper marketing tool, at, like it's supposed to be, it's supposed to show your legitimacy, right? And so, I one of the best things I get to do is nobody else has that certification in Phoenix, a city of four point five million people. I am the <laughs> only, the only one. one. Only one. There's a couple. There's like. Eight or nine guys that have carpet, and there's they somehow recently I went and checked the registry again, and there's now a bunch of people that have like vinyl plank certs. But I'm the only hardwood laminate luxury vinyl plank guy. And if you don't think that I'm putting on every single post and advertisement that I make online that I am the only certified flooring installer for hardwood laminate and luxury vinyl plank within the greater Phoenix area. You got to be kidding yourself because that's exactly what I do. Whether it stands out, like that's got to stand out to some people. And just like, what's that? Like, I don't, this guy's yeah. serious. Like, you know. And Having then he, that CTI number on there, I think, sparks some curiosity. And so I'm sure that more customers than I know of look it up and see what it is. And then I think that mm-hmm. it's, I, I don't, I don't brag about it or push it because I, you know, if you hire who you want to hire, do your due diligence. I've given you all the information and, I think nine times out of 10, it scores me the job over someone else. 
I would agree. I, and I think talking about like I've had people that are like, oh, are you available to do something, you know, around here? And I'm like, no, I'm going out of town. I got to go up to Vegas. And, you know, there's it's the big annual show and I got to speak at it or I'm going to this event over here. You start talking about that kind of stuff to clients and they get real interested real quick because yep. nobody else coming into their house is talking about going and getting continuing education or staying up to date or um, I, I yeah. will let them know Everyone like walks in just as like measures it up okay i'll send you a price i don't say hey where's the power for this floor heat coming from yeah so hang on power whoa whoa you know there's all of those little all the little details of the job because when i walk into a job i walk in there i look at it and i just work through my head from start to finish okay mm -hmm. all the details of what we've got to do from start to finish and go over them with them to put my estimate together because i need to know all that stuff Exactly. And a, a lot of people don't, right? They, like you said, they walk in, they measure everything. Here's a price, take it or leave it. Yep. And and you start showing some, some proficiency and that's where people are going to allow you to be more expensive and provide them with quote unquote, the same thing, because now you're providing value. You're yep. showing the, an expertise that nobody else is doing. And so again, going to Thassi and, and hanging out with people that are doing this, it's going to give you the abilities to change not only how you work in your business with the technical side, but on the business side too, of showing people where you actually provide value that you weren't before. A thing that I, I did recently was I, I had, well, I'd, I had told a, uh, a client from one of the, the mastermind groups recently about like, Oh, I was always planning on doing a, like a pamphlet going over like my processes and a little bit about the business and all this different stuff. And he was like, Oh, that's a great idea. And so he got it made up and he's been closing way more leads than previously at a higher amount since he mm -hmm. made it. And like, he went over to a lady's house recently and he bid it like three weeks ago and he just started the, the job yesterday and it was still like sitting out unfolded on her kitchen island, which we like, she's been walking past this thing like every day, looking at it, staring at, right? Like, oh, Reggie's awesome. Like, look at what he provides for me. And I should it, put together a pamphlet. I should put together a, like a, a checklist type pamphlet that I pull out and go through with the customer mm -hmm. and it, then leave it with it. It, dude, it makes it's going to make all the difference. It seems like something that's really dumb, but here's the thing: is you got to remember, like they don't what, remember all that. It, do, look, yeah, they're going to they get overloaded, right? They've got if they're doing their due diligence, they've got three to five people coming to their house telling them three to five different things, and they're all telling them a ton of stuff within a thirty minute to an hour period. They don't know anything you're talking about because this is not their expertise. And then you leave them documentation that tells them all the same stuff you went over. And then you come in with the highest bid and you're the only person that they can go back and look at like, oh, it's all this stuff. Well, nobody else covered that I'm going to get an extended warranty and that it's going to be done this way. And, oh, look, here's some like standards and, and practices that have to be followed by the industry. And he's the only one that talked about these things. I see why he's more expensive. It makes more sense. I feel most comfortable going with xyz over everybody else mm -hmm. it's it's been awesome um it's been really cool to see so i made up my own and even i've like the the few that i've set put them out on have gone very very well and people are like oh wow this is so nice like thank you and you know it's it's making a difference so it's it's really weird how the bar is so low it's very easy to step over and then to make it look like you raised it a mile high, it doesn't take much more. No, it does not. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's not hard. <laughs> I feel bad sometimes when I walk into jobs and I start talking and you could tell the customer's like, the other guy didn't say any of this stuff. I'm like, um, uh -huh. <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to make him look bad, but you need to make sure you think about this. Uh-huh. Yeah, like I'm just going over basic things that should be done. I, I don't know what to job. tell you. Just part of my job. Yeah. Um, what else do we got? We got anything else going on at, at Thassi that we didn't cover? 
we want to have the or <clears throat> the plan is to have manufacturers with their booths so they can show off their wares and show off their products, but also have their module attached to it to demonstrate. Mm-hmm. You know, the plan is to try to set. We don't obviously we don't have a schedule right now because we don't know exactly what everyone's going to be doing, but we want to try to <clears throat> make it so that you know. One manufacturer at this time is going to demonstrate to this point, and then we got dry time in between. We can go over and do this thing, try to bounce around and make it so we can get through everyone's demonstrations start to finish by the end mm-hmm. of the event. Okay. Including dry times and that kind of stuff. Okay. That's that's pretty smart, right? Like, we're not going to be waiting at one. I'm not stuck at one all day. I can I can Watching go around and... S- yeah. <laughs> hey, that sounds thrilling. Uh, and then what's the what's the long term goal? What what else are we going to be doing with Thassy? You know, the long for right now, the goal is to try to get something put together and see how it goes. We hope that it uh, we hope that it goes well. We hope that people benefit from it. We hope that it's educational and it takes something away that makes their business better and helps them make more money. And if we can do that, we'd like to, and we have a willing host somewhere else in the country. We're definitely open to moving it there for next year. Okay. That's right now. We're focused on what we're, what we've got going on in Fresno. We want to make this as, as good as we can and make it as beneficial to everyone that invests the time and money to show up. And it is, it's in March, March. It's late, late March, 23rd, 24th, something, something like, I don't know. I'm sorry. I can't remember it. We plan it around my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> my birthday is the seventh of March, and my wife, my we we try to do stuff for each other's birthdays where we go to take each other out of town to go for our birthdays and get away from the kids, okay. and away from work, and away from life. So I, it's either the week before the seventh or the week after the seventh. I can't remember what well, we decided. I, I think am, it's the week after. I am trying to use the power of the internet and it's not going well we, we're working on it folks i'm gonna go here, to the give me one second here. you give gotta me one join second. the the facebook group go join the hybrid and advanced systems installation group and you can hang out over there and then uh maybe this loads up and i'm gonna find a post and it should have a date on it very prepared this episode let me tell you uh yeah Oh, on YouTube now. No one's posted about it in a minute, apparently, and this is no good. Come on, uh, Chris, I'm calling you out on this one. You better better get to it and start posting some more content. Uh, all right, look, it's in March 2024. Um, on, give, me, give me less than 10 seconds. And, all right. That didn't help. March 1st. March just says March. What is is this March first? March March one to Soto Sales. Is that what we're doing? March first. That's what it looks like. All right. Beginning of March. Uh, and, and so often, often Fresno at, over at DeSoto Sales and uh, where I took it, where I took my CTI test with oh. everyone watching. It was not fun. <laughs> It, that that can be nerve wracking, I'm sure. And so you guys are going to be up over there. Look, it's easily accessible. You can fly there. Um, yep. th- there's no reason not to. It's after uh, what? Okay, so there's we got we got surfaces late January, and then coverings is probably oh, April. April. April, probably right. So like, hey, it's perfect. It's in the middle. Like you know, let's. Let's make it happen, folks. Let's get there. Let's get some other stuff in. And honestly, if you're if you're an installer, this is a great investment. I'm not like it, it hasn't even happened yet, but knowing who's putting it on, what they're aiming to accomplish as an installer, this is an event that's going to benefit you. I, I will tell you firsthand that as an installer and and I love Tice, I love surfaces, it's an amazing event as an installer, they are getting better at providing things every year. Um, I love going for the networking opportunities. That's what I really truly get out of it, but it's a product show. It's definitely geared more towards, you know, retailers being able to see what flooring is coming out and what's hot or what products they can sell and, and what tools are becoming available, things like that. Um, 
coverings is how to sell it and how uh, to do it. uh, Correct. And coverings, I feel is kind of the same way. It's a little bit better. There is some, a little bit more stuff that's like installer friendly, but again, it's, it's really for like the, the people that are going to be moving some material. And then there's like some tool stuff, but it is a really, really big show with a lot, a lot of tile and, and, and whatnot. But this is those, stuff that's those shows are cool. Like coverings is cool because as an installer, I can go and see what's available out there. Mm-hmm. We want to this event. We want to show you to make what's out there work. And, and I think that's the benefit, right? Is we get to work with the actual materials. We get to see how it all comes together, and that's what makes the difference and why it's a great event for installers. You're anybody. I say this all the time. Anybody that's willing to buy a plane ticket to travel somewhere in the country, take time away from their business, especially if they're an owner operator and show up to these events. Those are the people you want to go hang out with because they are the ones that are dedicated to it, not only advancing their craft, but advancing their business and the conversations you're going to have the friendships you're going to make that you can continue to pull from moving forward. will they'll change your life. This is how I've done whatever it is that I've done in this industry. I I don't even know sometimes, but to go from installer to guy that runs his mouth on a, on a microphone and installs part time at this point, this is how I've done it is I've just gone and, and I've met people that are super committed to the industries that they are specifically involved in. And I've made really great relationships and it's not only changed my life but i i hope it's changed theirs I, and i think you know brant's participated in many things i think he would openly agree with that yes i've been at the mud event for the past oh, three four five six so four years i've gone to coverings what else have i gone to i guess that would be all of it. just five in the past four years but you've probably also gone to a, some local events and, and just going to like the, the man, look, I love that the manufacturers come in and they do their product demos and they tell you what's new and you can learn how to do it. But it's just a, it's a different vibe at a local event when you can pull up in your truck and there's not a ton of commitment and, and you're really like more in it for the breakfast burrito or the, the pizza or whatever it is that they're throwing at you than you are, or maybe there's a raffle than you are to actually like go meet new people and have amazing conversations. When you fork out the money to fly out to an event to go meet your Facebook friends, as my Uber driver when I went to Mud Three said. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when you when you do that, that's though that's when you when you really invest yourself into it, that's when it's benefits you the most. Yeah. And it's, it's got to be an investment or you're not going to take it seriously. So get it on the calendar. March Mark it 1st out. and 2nd. Okay, March 1st and 2nd. Get it on the calendar now because just like, you know, I'm going to tell you in a minute with, with an ad for Tice, like you're not going if you don't put it on the calendar. You have to block it out and then you have to make a commitment. Book the hotel, book the flight, book something now so that you have no excuse not to go because other, I, I know you're not going to go. Everyone, I hear so many people every year. My wife your, your wife, I'm sorry, your wife what? It's like my wife and our Disneyland trip. We booked it a couple months ago. We're going at the end of November. Uh-huh. You're committed now. I, it's, I have people, I, I see it every year. Every big show comes around, right? It doesn't matter if it's NWFA, Expo, Tice, Coverings, Mud, whatever. You see all kinds of people. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. They don't buy a plane ticket. They don't book a hotel months in advance. They don't block it out on their calendar so they can't put a project there. And then, well, I'm not sure. I might be going. I don't know yet. uh, Yeah, but then somebody comes along and they bid a project. They're like, "Can you do it here?" And and you take the money every time because you not want the money to go somewhere. Uh huh. So you got to fork it out. And I'll tell you what, it's gonna if you can't find a way to 10x the investment, you're doing the events wrong. That's what I'm going to tell you. Like you have to be able to go and have the conversations and meet the people and do the things. And you should be able to 10 X the investment. If it costs you $2,500 to go and you can't find a way to add $25,000 in revenue to your business in the next year, 
you're doing the events wrong for sure. Yeah. Like, and no questions asked. All right. Um, anything we didn't hit on need to cover, talk about. Not that I can think of. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, any, anybody you want to throw under the bus bash, we want to talk bad about the industry, you know, let's get blackballed right now. Anything we want to do in that, in that arena. I'll save that for later. Okay. I think that's a, I think that's a safe choice, but that's not usually why we're here. I just wanted to have some fun. All right, folks. Uh, that is going to do it for us. I got a couple of quick words here. So what do we got? As I said, I got to plug, I got to plug Tice. Hey listeners, it's nearing show season again. And I want to remind you that the international surface event is returning to Las Vegas, January 24th through 26th. So mark your calendars. Now floor Academy podcast listeners, have the opportunity to register for free using promo code Kyle K Y L E. You can't forget it. It's my name. Go on the website, type it in and you get your free exhibition pass. Whether you're an installer, retailer, distributor, or serve in another capacity within our industry, attending TICE is a solid resource to expand your knowledge and networking base. You can also learn about the newest and industry leading products coming to market. Stay up to date with the international surface event page on Facebook or online at intl surfaceevent.com. You know the grind, the dust, the rain, the cold? We do too. We're IQ Power Tools, born from the sweat and grit of two masons who knew there had to be a better way. We're not just making tools, we're elevating the whole damn game. From our hands to yours, our story is your story. So let's cut the dust, not the ambition. Can't wait to meet you where it all happens, the job site. For more information on IQ Power Tools and their products, check out the link in the show notes. And look, if you're not a tile person, still go check out IQ. Get on their vacuum. It is the the best mid-range HEPA vacuum that meets OSHA standards because the, the stuff that you're buying, like the that $600 priced... Uh, HEPAVAC that's from the, the big tool manufacturers doesn't meet OSHA compliance standards for seven inch grinder. And I own an Ermator S26 that they've now discontinued. And there's some other equivalent model these days. And, and you step up into that vacuum and it's like $2,400, $2,600. The IQ is super competitively priced at like a thousand bucks. Now it meets the OSHA compliance standards. You can do dustless tile removal with it. It's going to add a ton of value to your business. And if you can't find a way to pay that off, like quickly, especially being able to offer dustless tile removal again, you're just doing it wrong. It's a great vacuum. Um, and so go to the link in the show notes, click on that and give them, uh, you know, give them a little peek, see what they're up to. Go uh, head over to FloorAcademyPod.com. Check out the file section. I got a bunch of useful tools over there to help you figure out not only what you should be charging for a day rate based on your business model and what it costs you to operate your business. We've got the tool tracker, so a spreadsheet you can put all your tools in with pictures and serial numbers. And if your stuff is ever stolen, your insurance guy will hate how organized you are. And there's a... Uh, there's a job cost analyzer so you can get your job costing on and see which jobs you're most profitable on and say, you know what? I don't want to do that stuff anymore. I'm losing money and I make a lot of money over here. I'm going to look for more of this stuff and you can just, you get more efficient and dialed in. Uh, again, you can help support the show at patreon.com forward slash floor Academy. Even five bucks a month goes a long way in helping to support the show and the content coming to help you grow your businesses. That's going to do it for us this week. Thank you, Brant, for joining us and talking about Thassi and the opportunities coming at the beginning of March. And we will catch you next week.